All right. This is John Bartens, and we're going to start the webinar in about two minutes. So hang right in there. Uh, we got an exciting webinar today going on as I share my screen. And um, we're going to chat about business models today. Probably one of the most important topics to look at if you want to grow your business. Uh, I want to make sure I share, make sure things going well. Here it is. Here it is. Great. Um, I'm John Bartos. For those who are new, uh, certainly welcome to the uh, obviously pandemic webinars we've been having. Now, this is the 20th webinar we've been having for the entire industry to help them not only get through the slowdown due to the COVID uh, crisis, if you will, but also to help you get better and better and better to help build your firm or your desk, which, which either one. And uh, if you go to uh, 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 the, our YouTube page, which is Jonathan Bartos YouTube page, you'll be able to see every single one of the little webinars we do at lunchtime. lunchtime. Uh, now this is the 20th one, so they'll be all there. And you can take a look at the different things that we've actually done. We're sponsored by two things. Number one, we're sponsored by SearchPath Global. And if you don't know, SearchPath Global is the fourth fastest growing franchise system uh, right now in the United States. And the goal is to be the top franchise system here uh, within the next two years. The reason why people are joining SearchPath right now is because almost everything I'm going to share with you today, including global models and global uses and all this stuff, is given away for free within the search path system. So I'm going to share this stuff with you that I think you're going to be excited about it. And, and if, you, if you don't want to go it alone, you're tired of doing what you're doing, come and check us out at search path. And uh, you'll be glad you did. Also, this is sponsored by the RPM dashboard, the, the leading analyt, performance analytics software packages, specifically for the industry. Why are people using RPM all over the world? Number one, it helps you set your goals, helps you achieve your goals, but more importantly, it's almost like the dashboard on your car that tells you how you're operating. You know, in, in, with tel te telemetry now, uh, Formula One racers and NASCAR racers can actually watch what's happening uh, on the track, make some computer adjustments, and now they can perform better, that car uh, could perform better on the track. Well, that's called telemetry. RPM is te telemetry specifically for um, the recruiting community and staffing community. So companies are using this to scale and get bigger because it tells you what you do well, it tells you what you don't do too well, but it gives you training and development and how to get better at that skill. If it's matching, if it's poor job orders, you're having client problems, if it's recruiting issues, marketing issues, matching skills, all of those things can help. You can help get better by simply using the RPM dashboard and it can help you achieve your potential. This is why people use it, and it's inexpensive. So anyways, get a hold of me at the end of this thing if you're interested in looking at any of that stuff. So this, this webinar today is probably one of the most important webinars if you want to build your desk or your firm. And I'm gonna go through topics uh, that I wish to God more people talked about, but they don't. And I'm gonna tell you reasons why, what works and what doesn't work for every single business model. So, and the reason I want to bring this out is because what this industry is used to is a bunch of people behind a desk trying to do everything themselves. And that's great if you want to be a one-armed paper hanger and try to do everything and try to build more and try to build more all by yourself. But there's other models and other things you can put in place to help you get better. And keep in mind during this conversation a couple concepts. One concept is this. There's $5 an hour jobs. When I mean $5 an hour jobs, I mean low. It doesn't have to be five. It could be 15 or 10. Um, there's also $500, $500 an hour jobs, meaning that the, what you're doing is worth so much money that you should be doing more of that than less of the $5 an hour stuff. All right. So keep that concept in mind. And the more $500 an hour stuff I do, the more money I'm going to make. That's a bottom line. That's how this whole thing works. But the more $5 an hour jobs I do that take up most of my day or my team's day, the less money we're going to make. That's the concept of life, ladies and gentlemen. If you continue to do the low value activities during your day and week and year, the less money you're going to be bringing in. So the goal of this concept that we're going to talk about when it comes to models and global models for your business is going to be understanding the concept of value and what your time is really worth. So let's get rocking and rolling because uh, 
somebody had uh, Kelly texted me uh, before, sent me an email and said that uh, she's got stuff going on. So we got to get, get going. Anyways, we're going to review um, last month. Last month, we talked about A-player marketing and the best concepts for A-player marketing. If you didn't see our webinar, watch it because I gave you scripts just like this on what is working. Now, I'm telling you right now, email's not working really good. Phone, phone voicemails are not working really good. What's working really new, good to get appointments and all that stuff? It's LinkedIn messages. That's what's working out there today. Why is it working there today? I think social media overtook even texting now for responses that are out there. So long story short, the last meeting, I, I gave many ideas of not only how to market an A player, what an A player was, but how to market a group of A players to your specific vertical marketplace or Zebra so that would allow you to be successful. So you have the technology doing a lot of the work for you. So you're spending more time on the phone with candidates and clients. Uh, and, and as we said at the end, in order for you to implement an effective A player campaign, campaign that's bringing you business, that's bringing new logos in, new clients that you can call on every single day, number one, you've got to have a very defined niche for your A, for your a player. Uh, so, so you have to have a very specific vertical or micro niche is what we typically call it. Two, you've got to make getting appointments, cadences and intros, part of your day. Every, it's like putting on your shoes in the morning. You've got to do 25 to 100 reach outs on LinkedIn to get up appointments today. Uh, number three is you've got to ensure that your A player going to the marketplace is a real A player and it's in high demand. They really need it. There's positions all over the place. So um, some of the things we talked about last week has, have allowed a lot of people who've reached out to me to start now getting appointments, start making placements. Now, in any down economy, COVID for instance, people are realizing that the things that are working is just not filling searches now, it's really bringing A players to the table. So make it part of your daily routine. If you haven't narrowed down your niche or zebra, narrow it down. If you haven't picked the right position in high demand, do that today. How do I tell if my position I'm working on is, is in high demand? Get on indeed.com, type in the title, location, uh, type in the actual specific industry and see how many positions are available today. So you can have a, a, the opportunity to determine, is it a high demand position in my marketplace or not? Anyways, that was a review from last week. And uh, now we're gonna jump on certainly to business models. So one of the concerns I have about our whole industry, and I'm gonna be honest with everybody here is, so why does Manpower, uh, Kelly Services, Ronstadt, CDI, uh, you know, I, I could go over and over that folks in the contract professional staffing, not per, it doesn't have to be professional staffing, but in the contractor staffing world, well, why are they on, pub, on public, uh, traded publicly, and, and how do they build a, a billion dollar businesses? Where the average uh, executive search firm doing permanent placement has about 1.3 employees. Okay, that's probably an exaggeration. It's probably 1.7 on average. <laughs> that's how many employees they have. So contract staffing made it to a billion dollars plus. Uh, many of the firms out there, and many have hundreds of millions, but why in the permanent placement world are we stuck in an average company that's a 1.7 employees? Maybe two, I don't know. I'm guessing at what it is, but it's not many. Why is that? And I would admit to you, it's their business model. It's, that's the reason why executive search firms can't freaking grow. It's a stupid business model that's out there. And we're stuck in the old days. So today we're gonna change that. No longer are we gonna be an average of 1.7 or 1.3 employees. We're gonna start to scale if you have the right business model. And let's kind of go through that a little bit on why that's all occurring. All right, so a business model that you choose, number one, is really not uh, uh, just a, a decision you want to make, but it's really about the vision you want from your firm. So for instance, if I'm a big builder working for another firm, I want to think about business models for my desk as well. What business models will make sense? What's going to be most profitable for us to do? Because today we're going to look at this. Not only what, what's, it going to, you know, what's it going to cost you to do these, these kinds of things, but we're going to look at business models that absolutely make sense that are out there. And by the way, um, if anybody wants to get information about links and where we are, go to chat and you'll see a ton of things in chat that you guys can, can take a look at, by the way. So I would say the first consideration when coming to a business model, what is your vision? 
some people are happy, you know, just working, you know, billing a couple hundred thousand dollars, working in their, uh, you know, at home or in a cottage someplace, make a couple placements per month, maybe one a month and one every other month. And they're completely happy with that, which is completely fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But if your vision is to build something and build something most effective, I mean, if efficient and effective, you need to take a look at other business models that are out there to help you scale and help you scale profitably. Go back to the discussion I said before. There's $5 an hour activities and there's $500 an hour in activities. And I think, by the way, certain activities that I do are more. I was on the phone uh, based on my appointment setting uh, technologies we're using. I'm on the phone four or five times a day with brand new logos, brand new clients, having great conversations. I just had a conversation with one of my target clients. He's given us three searches to try us out. Just between you and me, how much was that call worth? Well, I was on the phone probably 20 minutes. I say the call was worth $5,000 for that 20 minutes I was just on the phone with him. So you have to look at the value of your time and the duties that you're actually doing. Now, what's it worth for me to get on LinkedIn and start sending out these little invites to get people on the phone? Well, I could probably hire that out for about six bucks an hour in the Philippines. So it's not a big dollar volume activity, right? It's, it's not a big value activity. It has to be done. I got to wear underwear every day. Has to be done. But it doesn't have to be done by me. Uh, the whole point being, you know, I can have somebody else do that for what, it, uh, for what it is. So if you think about the business models, number one, consider your time, the value of the specific activity you're doing. And number two, your vision. What do you want to achieve through your business? And if guys, if you guys don't know what it is and you want to brainstorm, get me on the phone with you because I've helped all sorts of businesses scale from small to big and then really got right size based on what the vision of the owner or the vision of the individual wanted to achieve. It's real important of what you want to achieve through your business based on, uh, based on what you want out of it. That's the bottom line. Now, and also when you're looking at a business model, it's not really about, I just want to get a great business model. A lot of the business models you have to choose are either based on your strengths or based on your weaknesses or based on what you don't want to do. Okay. Let's say I'm really good at research, but between you and me, if I had a chance of being on a phone with a client or a candidate or, or research, I'm going to do the first two, right? So, so it's based on your strengths, what you're really good at. It could be based on your weaknesses, what you're not good at or don't want to do. And that's how business models are started. Okay. Then we start thinking about, okay, what am I good? What am I not good at? How do we make a business model that takes care of those things? Either I don't want to do, I'm not good at it. And how do I do more of what I'm great at in, in the business? For instance, for me, uh, business development has always been kind of fun. I like it. I love it. I love talking to people. But what I don't like doing is getting appointments. I don't like sending invites and doing all that kind of stuff because I think it takes up too much of my time. Um, I, I'm great at recruiting. I'm great at recruiting. And I love recruiting as well. I don't have a ton of time to do it. So now I have people that actually do some of the recruiting for me. Um, and so I have a, a business model uh, that I have people who are great at certain activities that they do those activities for me. And I stick to my strengths on the phone with clients, mainly clients, bringing in business and so on. So it's really based on your strengths. It's based on your weaknesses, your business model, but also what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Okay. The third thing on a business model, it's really where you are in your business life cycle. Let's, let's say you just started business this year. Horrible year, probably, to start in the recruiting business. And I feel sorry for the folks who did. Um, but if you think about that, if you're brand new in the business and just understanding the business, some of these business models will make no sense to you. And there's no sense of you even talking about them until you get to that point. So as a business matures and a business gets better and better and better, Typically what happens, a tr traditional life cycle of a business in the recruiting industry, you st start as a one desk office, a 360 one desk office. You uh, market in the morning, you recruit in the afternoon, you plan a, plan a non-selling time, right? And after five o'clock, you're planning. You're doing everything you need to do. As you build that business and realize, now, okay, I'm really good at business development. I've got 10 searches and it's just me. Uh, instead of farming them out to some of these organizations that have a lot of recruiters, I'm gonna hire a recruiter that does these things. And then, then the business models start to evolve based on where that business is in its life cycle. All right, so there's a lot of things that have to come uh, in with that. Number one is, is there a vertical niche that you're trying to dominate? Is there a specific position base that you're trying to go as your zebra? All of those things have to be considered when the business life cycle takes off. Let's keep going. The real main function, the things that changed, everybody, here's the things that changed in the last three years in recruiting, is there's four main activities in recruiting, if you will. 
Um, it used to be three, research, recruiting, and marketing. Uh, now it's four. The first one is research, okay? There, you know, so when we put somebody through a training program uh, through Search Path University, we spend about a week, so they become experts at research and planning. So if we said, I need you to find a purple, red-haired bulldog, you know, they'll have the ability to find that by putting the right search strings together, competitive companies, all of those keywords, all of those things together. So that has to be one of the activities that we need expertise on, all right? Uh, so number two, is appointment getting. This is what's new. Here's what happened. Email stopped working. Your voicemail stopped working. So what started working? Appointment getting from using the different technologies. How am I getting four to five appointments today? Through LinkedIn. It's exactly how I'm doing it right now. Brand new logos coming in. Now I talked a little about that last month for those who are on the last month call, but that's another activity for instance. So if I'm really good at marketing, but I'm not really good at getting people on the phone to have a conversation. Appointment getting is the problem. And so it's a main activity. And John, you raised your hand. Uh, I'm gonna just say this, um, go to chat and type your message on chat. I, I, I would love to tell you, I know how to answer that when you raise a hand, I just don't know how to do it. So go to chat, give me your message and, and I'll read it off and answer it for you if you don't mind. So I appreciate that, John. I apologize for my technical uh, difficulties. So the, the, one of the main activities then is research, appointment getting, then it's marketing business development, obviously, and there's, there's recruiting. So if we take a look at this, there's a lot of other duties based on where you are in your business cycle that could be done. For instance, I closed a major account in 2006 or seven that gave us 40 to 50 positions on a monthly basis. Well, what did I do? I brought somebody in as an account manager to act as a project manager, to bring them in specifically so I can still focus on my duties to do what I needed to do, but I brought them in to manage that account and be the project manager in quality control to work with the recruiters that are out there. So, so that was one of the main functions that's going on. So, so let's go back to the fact. So what? So why is, so why is the recruiting industry, the executive search is not growing? I mean, why is the average company 1.7 employees? What the, really? Seriously? Where are the contract staffing and other firms out there that grow? And my, my admission to you, it's because of business model. The recruiting industry has a flawed business model that typically people go with. We're going to go to their next. Okay. So, so, so the, the, the news on this page, if you will, the aha moment on this page, it's no longer research, marketing, recruiting. Now you have to have expertise in appointment getting, getting people on the phone to have a conversation. And it's not as simple as leaving 400 voicemails anymore because everybody else in the world is doing it, it's not working. So, so keep that in mind. Now that this is what actually changed in the recruiting industry. Okay, so look at the models that are out there. Uh, there we go. I'm not sure why two came down before one, but uh, it's probably going to happen on every other slide. I guess I should have went through this before I, uh, went, once I actually did this. The traditional business model of the recruiting industry was this. One person, one, one arm paper hanger doing it all. Now for the folks out there doing that, this is not cutting the business model down by any means. No, the recruiting industry is such a great industry. If you're good at doing some research and marketing and business development appointment getting today, you'll be fine. You'll still do it, make a great living, but our industry is full. And I think if I told percentages, it's well over 60% of the individuals are one, one arm paper hangers doing one 360, meaning they got a market. Uh, they have to get appointment getting going on the go. They have to do their own research. Uh, and they have their own, do own, their own business development. The problem with this model is we are all not good at all four of those functions, which is a main problem. And, and the other problem uh, with this model, by the way, is that you don't have time to do all of these things effectively because it's all one person doing it. Now, if you're, again, it's all based on your goals, remember? It's based on your vision of what you want to grow. If you want to do this business and make a couple hundred thousand dollars a year, yeah. One desk, three, 360, and 360 means you do marketing and recruiting, all, every, every activity, all the way around. C can you be successful doing that? Absolutely you can, if that's what your goal is. Now you wanna build a million dollar practice? Pretty tough to do one, one person. One, a one arm paper hanger struggles 
doing a million dollars because they do not have the time in the day to do everything. Or they move their day from an eight hour day to a 12 hour day to a 20 hour day. The, the big more day you use, you could probably do more, but then you don't have a life. And I don't think we uh, live to work. I think we work to have a life, right? That's what we do. That's why we're in this industry. So that's why we're out there. So there's nothing wrong with this model, not cutting it down. For those folks who love it, it's great, but you've got to be good at all those four functions now, research, marketing, appointment getting, and recruiting every single day. And the key to success for this business model is structuring your day, not doing recruiting and research and everything at the same time, but you close your shop down at four. You plan like a mofo, you know, for the rest of the day. At nine o'clock in the morning when you get in, you do appointment getting. 9.30, you do, you know, so it's really structuring your day appropriately to be successful, to be most effective. But the problems with this individual biller model, unfortunately, we're not all good at four functions of recruiting today. We're not, which is, again, the reason why we're not growing as, a, as an industry, uh, as a practice. No. So, so, so what is the contract staffing business model? Well, I don't have it written down, but I'm going to tell you. Um, they have a business development. They have recruiting as separate functions and separate individuals. These guys get out there, or girls, knock down business. These pr people recruit, and sometimes they have a research function. But because they have delineation of duties, they get really, really good at what they're doing. Super, super good at business development, super, super good, good at recruiting, and now they can do numbers. Now, instead of doing one placement a month, they can do 10 placements a month or whatever the number is going to be. But it's more because they have people great at their specific duties. Not good but great at specific duties that they have. And believe it or not, when you're putting together a team, you have to have individual members of that team phenomenal at whatever duty that they're doing. The biggest way to kill a team is to have somebody not good at what they're doing. You know, I don't know if you guys know, but uh, watching the Cincinnati Bengals, not last, not last week, but the weeks before, I swear to God that the tackle, who's somebody should have replaced him because – Letting somebody in to, to tackle Burles was just ridiculous. Everybody was real. Joe Burrell, the best there is. Got some ends who are some of the best in the league. But you have that one person on the team letting somebody in to sack the quarterback. In a team-based model, there could be one person to screw the whole thing up. So it has to be managed. It has to be managed in a team-based model. Let's keep going. Other stuff here. I'm jumping ahead. Now, the second model that, that are very popular out there is a dual desk office, which two people, maybe in the same market, maybe in different marketplaces, same makes more sense. They do it all themselves. Uh, they do it all, all activities. The success is based on doing all four of the activities, structuring their day is gonna be the success. But the problem with that one, the dual desk model is we're not all good at the four functions today. And, and I can, dare, I can dare, guarantee that 90% of everybody out here, including me six weeks ago, were horrible at appointment getting. Couldn't figure out how to do it, all right? So that's, that's gonna be a major, major thing that we need to focus on. So if we took a look at those two models and say, okay, what are we going to do to change it so it better works for me? Again, remember what I said about the single desk model, you have to do your strengths and then figure out if you're weak at something, somebody else could potentially do that for you. And not only business development or recruiting, it can be in anything. It could be in anything from research to appointment getting. You could have farm those activities out to somebody so that you're focused on what you're really good at. So this is called a partnership, partnership models. Now, individuals focus on their very specific strengths. It's almost like a football team. You know, like the right tackle has to be a great right tackle. Quarterback has to be a great quarterback. So, so all of that is positive. So what you do is going to take a look at what you're good at, what you're not good at, or what you need done or what you don't like to be done, and pick something that you can outsource. And we're going to talk about that in just a little bit. Now, your success is doing your specific duty really, really, really well. Research, marketing, appointment, getting, or recruiting. And then, uh, I don't know. Oh, I went the wrong way here. Guys. Sorry about that. Uh, there we go. And then, structuring your day is still going to be key to the success. But more important, if one part of the system doesn't work, the whole team doesn't work. Now, um, since about 2000, I've had a team-based approach. I had somebody doing my research for me, who was excellent at research. I had somebody doing recruiting or multiple people doing recruiting for me. And I've also uh, had myself doing business development. So that all works when the team's all working, meaning that every duty on that team. But let's say research sucks. And a research job is to make sure I have opportunities to call on. And um, they also are responsible for helping the recruiters find those hidden eight players that are out there using all the technologies from 
LinkedIn to you, you name the technology, you know, Zoom info, you name it. So, but if one part of that system breaks down, the whole system doesn't work. You know, then you have a very costly system that's just killing you from a cost perspective. And I've been through that multiple times uh, through my 25 year career within the uh, recruiting marketplace, that if my team wasn't working, it was just a costly boat anchor to me, you know? So I had to get rid of the individuals who were not working, replace them with folks who were really good at what they did uh, and get the system back in, in place. So the, the positive nature about this thing is that you can get somebody really, really good at what they do. Uh, the bad news about this thing, if somebody doesn't work out, you gotta replace them very, very quick. So it, it's, a pro, it's a thing that needs to be managed. It has to be managed. So what can I outsource? Well, my first hire, I started my business and my business ev evolution, if you will, was the first hire I did was a researcher, all right? So I did the business for about six months and realized I can do research really, really well. Um, I don't like to do it though. Um, so I hired an Ohio State grad to come in and do research for me. And I went uh, from making a couple placements a month to making as many as six, seven placements a month because the research was done, which kept me on the phone with candidates and clients. That's just something you can outsource. If it, my next hire from there on in my business evolution was another recruiter. N not only do I was doing business development, I was doing recruiting as well. Our researcher was helping both of us out. And then the other positions I couldn't get to, I'd get to my project, what I call recruiter, who just focused on recruiting. So I hired the best recruiter there was. And then the business model started building and building and building based on what we needed. Okay. So, so it all works well when that happens. And, and today I have somebody doing appointment getting for me specifically, getting me on the phone with new logos. I have somebody specifically who does research and I have a series of recruiters that help us recruit when we take uh, big organizations in and get multiple positions. So we're now running a company again. The greatest news, if you hire right and train right, it all works. Bad news is one person on the team doesn't work, the system still does not work. And that's the negative news about that. But if you take a look at contract staffing firms and why they grow is because of their business model. They realize that one person can't do it all. And then now from a business model perspective, they got a team of business development people, a team of recruiters. Um, all of them are very, very good at what they do and they scale accordingly, which allows them to scale that way. Okay. Now you also have multi-dimensional offices. What the hell does that mean? You're saying, well, you could have multiple business models within an organization. For instance, um, when I started um, my, my last firm, we were doing really well in supply chain technologies. And our business model was researcher, uh, quite a few recruiters, just me doing business development. We started building the healthcare IT practice with EMR solutions. So we, we put Epic, Cerner, McKesson, GE centricity, folks on board for not only hospitals, hospitals, but the big consulting firms. Well, because of that business model was lower in the evolution life cycle of a business, we started with one individual, then we brought two individuals on board, and then we started building that business model. But based on its life cycle, each business unit within an organization could be completely different and have different needs based on the strengths and weaknesses of that business unit. So if you look at this stuff, and guys, this is working on your business, not working in your business. You need to be looking at your business, no matter how you get 100 people, 300 people, you need to be looking at each business use unit and making those decisions on how to scale your organization based on the business unit, not the whole organization in general. But when I say this multidimensional, you can have one uh, business unit within your organization that does simply don't know, one person and they do 360. Uh, market in the morning, recruit in the afternoon, don't do their own appointment getting and research. You could also have another business unit that's more mature within your organization that you have multiple models that are in there. Dual desk, you've got uh, multiple recruiters, you got appointment setters, you got all sorts of things that can actually work for you. My suggestion is when you're doing your planning, it's almost year end, we should start the planning process now. Take a look at the business models. Here's what I would warn you about. The traditional model of recruiting that's been there since the 60s is one person does it all. Once they're successful, another person is brought on and does it all. Once they're successful, another person is brought on and, do it, and does it all. It's the slowest growing model in the industry, which probably is adding to why the industry is averaging 1.7 employees per, per office or whatever it is. It's, just, it's very, very small. I would suggest looking at your strengths, your weaknesses, what you wanna do, what you don't wanna do, and build that office accordingly, all right? So multiple dimensional office 
many models within business units. Business units evolve based on success and time. Uh, uh, but the difference here is you need hands-on leadership, working on the business and understanding what's happening versus in the business. Now, I have this problem where I'm so into what's happening, taking searches, bringing clients on board, closing deals, that I find myself working on, uh, in my business, doing what I do and my head's down, where I'm not taking an overall look at what's happening with the business and making the changes I need or adding and, and taking away from what I need to be doing. Don't do that. Now it's planning time. Uh, and, and so get ready for next year. Take a look at how you work on your business and based on the business units you have, or maybe it's just you, what could I do specifically to get better? Okay, let's keep going now. Now my business today, let me share with you what it is. And, and that way I can share with you some of this stuff going on. Um, today, I didn't want my, my business to be in one location. Matter of fact, I don't want people coming in. I don't have to manage folks and you know, all that kind of stuff. So I decided my last firm that I wanted to be in remote locations. And not only do I want remote locations, I wanted a model where I can afford it. Uh, so I looked at global business units and global models for my business. Now, keep in mind in a couple points here, and I'll go over my business in a second. All functions in the whole business of recruiting, meaning appointment getting, Research, marketing, and recruiting can be outsourced. And most of it, uh, marketing is questionable, but most of it can be outsourced globally for significantly less than you can hire a college kid today. Significantly less than you can. Now, typical outsourcing duties that are outsourced today regularly are these three. Research, appointment getting, and recruiting. So if any of these duties, uh, from your perspective, are a weak point or something you want to do, or you want to scale, you have the ability now to go a global model and then reduce your costs significantly. Matter of fact, in, in most instances, I can hire three people, three people globally for the price of one uh, here in the US to go out. Now, for those uh, made in America folks out there, hey, I'm not trying to you know, slow the business down. Uh, you know, I'm pro-American, uh, you know, I, I, I drive a Jeep, you know, so I'm not driving. I used to have Mercedes and Porsches and all that stuff. I got rid of all that stuff. I got F-250 pickup, I've got a Jeep I drive, you know, so I'm pro-America, pro-America, right? So, so but, but here's the thing. It, I'm trying to think of when I build my business, how do I build my business so it's cost effective and it really does what it needs to do. So, so just give me an example of my business today. We do have recruiting functions here in the U.S. And I have a recruiting function in New Jersey, Colorado, and Ohio. I do the business development for my firm, but I also have an individual that does appointment getting for me. Um, now, appointment getting can be done in Manila, Philippines, Medellin, Colombia, and you could get it for about a quarter of what you pay uh, for a college kid here. So, so those great I do, uh, duties to outsource. The research function themselves is a typical duty that's outsourced, and you'll find that today in Medellin, Colombia. You'll find that in Costa Rica, you'll find it in Mexico, uh, and you'll find that in India. Uh, and Manila, Philippines. Today, my research function and SearchPath Global's research function, we have some of the best researchers in the world out of Manila, Philippines. So a lot of the, and what that allows you to do, by the way, if you haven't done that, is instead of you trying to find all the people, somebody's actually going out there, finding the right people, bring them to the table, giving you their phone numbers, a LinkedIn profiles, personal emails, personal cells, giving that to you so you can quickly get your do job done. Now, the positive thing is lower cost. They can work when you're not working. So if it's, it's uh, Manila, Philippines or another place, it, it's gonna be there for you. Um, the bad news about this is like any employee, you gotta train them, you gotta train them. And some people struggle training the employees in, in another location. Um, real quick, blah, 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 blah. And there's some of the great notes on chat, by the way. So if you wanna take a look at chat, it's really good. Appointment getting. Um, probably one of the most critical functions for successful offices today. If you're not getting on a phone and having 20 to 25 conversations, 20 to 25 conversations, and, and like three or five of those are business development, you're not doing appointment getting right. And, and you need to focus on those activities. So there, there are firms out there, and uh, we at SearchPath have the ability to do this as well. Well, in the Manila, Philippines, we have folks actually doing these things with you. I'll give you an example of how it works for me. Uh, I have LinkedIn Sales Navigator as an account. Uh, I had uh, Jai, uh, seven years research, blah, blah, blah. Phenomenal, by the way, phenomenal. Manila, Philippines. Log into my account, 
And then he does 100 to 150 uh, individuals a day, gets appointments, uh, appointment setting uh, for. And then I get four to five appointments so far, probably averaging, let's say three to five per day, I'm on the phone with new, new clients and, and talking about what we potentially offer them. So, I mean, that's real, real important today. Appointment also getting works for recruiting. You gotta have, you gotta use the right techniques for appointment getting. So you can use folks in Costa Rica, uh, Medellin, Colombia, Manila, Philippines, um, India, to help you appointment get as well, to get you on the phone with the right people at, at minimal cost, at minimal cost uh, in order to do that. Guys, if you want any more information about this, get a hold of me. I'd love to talk to you about potential for your organization, how to put the right uh, models together. So, so today, I have recruiters uh, in the U.S. And those are in the U.S. I do the business development function. I have appointment setting that can be done in the U.S. or can be done in Medellin, Colombia, for me. And, and then, in, in, uh, and then, uh, in the research function is out of Manila, Philippines, for me. I have a whole research team that's actually there that actually will do research for other companies as well. But I wanted to bring the global models in and, and tell you the advantage to those. Um, so if I were to hire a researcher here to do my research in uh, the US, and let's say I hired a college kid out of college, here's, here's the problems. One is you're just a college kid. Two, um, I'd have to train them. Three, uh, whether they show up for work or not, eh, kind of crazy. Uh, so there's all those things that have to be done. College kid is going to cost me, let's say, twenty four thousand to forty thousand dollars a year. Um, I can hire a MBA in M Manila, Philippines, uh, for roughly, let's say, a thousand dollars a month. Uh, they're more mature. They know what they're doing. They're better English skills typically than uh, what we're seeing uh, from uh, U.S. grads, uh, and they cost me three times cheaper than, than than what a normal college kid would. Instead of four grand a month, three grand, I'm paying a thousand a month. So, so the cost is better. And then while I'm sleeping, they're working and getting me the data that they need to get. So global models are gonna be important. So let's recap a little bit of this whole, whole function for you. Um, number one, your business model is gonna be based on your vision of what you wanna achieve. When you wanna to go to a different business model, it's going to be based on your strengths, your weaknesses or something you don't wanna do. The four functions you need to be looking at you know, with, within the recruiting industry to scale and to potentially build a business model on our research, appointment getting, recruiting, and marketing. Now, you need to take a look at what you're good at, what you're not good at, and what you don't want to do, and then make some decisions. Does it make sense for me to put other business models together to make that happen? Now, I shared the different business models that are with you. In, in a big organization, multi-dimensional organization, if you will, then those individuals specifically may have multiple business models based on their business units. So if they got a supply chain business unit, an accounting business unit, and maybe an engineering business unit, the business models could look quite different in every one of those business units based specifically on the strengths and weaknesses of the individual players within. And this takes, if you will, you have to focus on working on your business and not just in your business. So my strong suggestion for everybody is start the business planning process now. Take a look at what you can do from a, to scale your business or change your business model so it works better for you and your lifestyle. You know, in uh, my decision coming on is I wanted to have experts in their field do what they need to do because I didn't want to work 15 hours a day anymore. You know, life is not about working longer and harder. What life's about is really trying to make sure you understand how to get things done right and make sure life is working for you. That's why we're in this business anyways. Uh, which is most important. Um, Lee, great question. Lee says, could you define appointment getting in person, Zoom, phone, or what? Um, the answer is yes. Appointment getting is the art of getting attention from somebody and getting an appointment. And that appointment could be on the phone, it could be a Zoom, could be in person. That's called appointment getting. You know? And what most people struggle with today is getting anybody to get an appointment. Now, most of my appointments aren't Zoom. They're just on the phone. I just get them on the phone. But all of those above uh, is something that appointment getter could certainly do to be on your goals. So that actually is appointment getting. Yeah, and guys, I'm open to questions. So if you have any questions about this stuff, let me know. And we can certainly uh, rock and roll and go through this stuff. This presentation will be available to you so you can take this stuff. Here's some great news, okay? I've made it easy for a lot of you. If you're interested in a potentially appointment getting outsourcing, meaning that you don't want to do it, you want somebody else to do it for you, or research, have the best researchers in the world doing research for you, get a hold of me. 
we have some of the best people in the world that does this and they have time to help other folks out. Uh, it's going to be pennies on the dollar compared to somebody else doing it or hiring somebody from the U.S. So we've put a actual plan together to help you be successful here. And then if you want to take a look at some training courses, we got a lot of stuff. Now, if you remember, you are a member of SearchPath Global Franchise uh, System, and there's a lot of great things we've got involved. Uh, just for the price of being a member of SearchPath, you get all of this stuff. Now, you don't get it for free. You got to still pay for the cost of research or the appointment getter, but we put and help you put these business models together based on your vision. We can help you scale your business quickly and put a plan together to get you to what your vision is. If it's to be on your boat in Lake Erie, Matt Dabransky, <laughs> being on your RV and going around North America, Jordan Rayboy, or, or, or it's you just want to build a big organization and have, have something to actually sell as you go and, and retire in five years. We are there to help you achieve what your vision is, not ours, which is important. We will help you put these global models together. So uh, get a hold of us if, if you have any questions, any concerns on this stuff. And there was a question I wanted to jump on here real quick um, so we can answer that and get rocking and rolling. Uh, could you define uh, blah, 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 got it, got it, got it. Are, are your appointment getting done uh, by using MPC calls, flip calls, or what kind of business development strategies are they using? Um, that's a great question, Lee, but it's multiple. Um, so uh, if you think about that from an appointment getting perspective, and here's what's happening today, um, and I should probably do, do a whole webinar on appointment getting uh, because it's such an important topic. Uh, it, if you think about that, in order for you to get an appointment from somebody, you have to have extreme value because nobody's, oh, I got another call from a recruiter. I can't wait to take that call. Okay, no, that, that just doesn't work. Just because you're a recruiter, you have 10 times less likely to get an appointment because you're a recruiter. So the problem, um, the, the, the way to resolve that is you got to solve a problem, either a general problem or a specific problem in order to get an appointment. Um, by the way, I, I did this webinar a while ago. So Victor, if you could figure out which webinar it was and we did appointment getting, um, we touched on it a little bit. Um, you know, pr Provide the link for that if you can uh, to everybody, it would be great. Um, but that's the whole idea. No, no one's going to get on the phone with you unless you're solving a problem. Or there's, it's, it's, there's some unbelievable value you're bringing to the table. And uh, certain things work better than others. A player appointment getting works phenomenal. Uh, a solution to a business problem works great. Uh, one of the things I went to the marketplace once was uh, uh, Forbes came out with a uh, study that said 57% of, of a sales organization in any company misses their numbers. And uh, when they came out with that article, one of my intro for appointment getter was, you know, uh, as you probably heard, 57% of sales organizations miss their number. If you want to change that paradigm, we've solved that problem for three-year competitors. Yeah, but, but so you got to have a solution to a problem, specific problem, or a solution to a general problem to add value. So if you're adding value, you're getting appointments if you're not adding value. But again, it's a numbers game. So if you go out and send 10 invites out with your message and get no response, don't be shocked. I mean, for in order for me to get three to five appointments a day, we're sending 100 to 150 messages out to potential hiring managers. We're having great conversations, but actually getting them on the phone, that's the kind of numbers we're doing in order to make that happen. So just keep that in mind. Uh, and then Victor, by the way, Victor Flores, our uh, product manager at RPM, and uh, obviously a very important person with the SearchPath uh, global franchise system, uh, just posted the YouTube channel that was April 1st when we did appointment getting. Anyways, anybody would like to get consulting from us, would like to uh, take a look at potentially search path, send Victor or myself an email. We're happy to help you out. As always, these webinars we do uh, at noon are free. They're just to help you get better at what you do and get you in a position to really prosper as we come out of this COVID uh, night day thing that I think we're gonna come out of in the next couple months. Good luck, good recruiting. Reach out to me if we can be of value at all. Thanks guys. Have a super day and a great month.